Hello and welcome to a socially distanced version of our Winnipeg checklist, where we talk to local businesses, ask them how they have adjusted to the pandemic, and show you how you can support a local business in Manitoba. Today we're talking to Nonsuch, who's a local brewery. We picked up some of their beers and their charcuterie board through curbside pickup, and we're gonna talk to Logan from Nonsuch and ask him all about it. Hey Logan, you there? Yes, I am. Howdy. Hey, hey, how's it going? I am swell. How are you today? Very good. Thank you. Thank you. So super excited for this. I actually am a big fan of you guys. Uh, I've been there plenty of times, love all your beers. So I'm really excited to, to try everything you guys have uh, supplied us today. Uh, but before we dive into that, tell me a little bit more about how, uh, your business and how you've adjusted uh, to the new regulations and how can Winnipeggers support you uh, at this time? Certainly. Well, um, obviously it's crazy times and, you know, uh, COVID has provided us with the opportunity to pivot uh, a number of times and we're lucky non such we have uh, we have a really uh, a really solid team and uh, we're always able to execute on, you know, new endeavors in a relatively efficient manner. So, um, you know, actually in March, uh, once we found out that the city was going into lockdown within one day, uh, two of our founders were able to build and uh, online our website and our online store so obviously uh, you know with there was the reduced capacity in the restaurant um, and then there is a time where nobody was allowed to be in the restaurants like now um, so we've you know we've kind of put a lot of our energy and effort into providing uh, a really good online experience so we have curbside pickup where you can uh, you know go onto our online website order beer order food come in and pick it up and then we also are offering home delivery so home delivery has been great obviously it's it's easy for somebody to you know head on the website you put your beer order in and uh, above 50 bucks you get free shipping and we do same day delivery so if you get your order in before two o'clock uh, from Tuesday to Saturday we'll deliver it the same day uh, that sounds like I'm so gonna have to take you up on that <laughs> especially yeah, on a yeah, Saturday we've, uh, <laughs> yes we uh, it's been really good actually you know what um, Winnipeg has uh, and I don't think it's just for us. I think for most local businesses, you, you see uh, not only local businesses, but consumers are actively promoting uh, the idea of supporting local, you know, um, and obviously kind of coming into the Christmas season, uh, we, we see that even more, right? It's like, well, if you can order something on Amazon, why not just order it from a local bake, a local maker um, or a local providers, you know, and um so what I've, I mean, my, my personal experience with our family, what we did this year is, you know, even if we're not necessarily going to see anybody, we still wanted to do gifts. So the idea was uh, local gifts. And, you know, it's it, it's pretty broad. Like you can get a boatload of things from a lot of local companies. And then the idea is that it doesn't necessarily need to be made in Winnipeg. But, you know, if there's a, a local bike shop or a local music store that you want to support, you know, they're all in need of a little bit of help. So aside from buying beer from Nonsuch. Uh, yeah, listen. I don't you know, mind that can, as a Christmas stocking stuffer. Like that, that sounds fantastic. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So, um, and we actually, you know what, this has been a really good chance for us to do a lot of experimentation. Um, we, we started a barrel aging process a, about a year ago and over the last eight, nine months, we've been slowly rolling out small batches of beer. So they're about 180 to 200 liter batches and, um, they're barrel aged. So some of the beers are aged in whiskey barrels or bourbon barrels. Um, yeah. So actually one of the beers I brought you today, uh, the Chambier. So we are just we just released another version of it this week and it was aged in a Riesling barrel um, with wine must for a whole year. So, you know, the idea of uh, taking something and, you know, putting it away, forgetting about it and then, you know, take it out a year later and you can really see how flavors have um, will have changed and how flavors have flourished and grown. Right. Sounds like we'll have to do another one of these in about a week from now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, fantastic. Yeah. So let's dive in here. So what do we got? We'll start with this one, the closest one to me. So the raspberry. Um, okay. Okay. So tell me more about this one. Wait before you open it. Oh, oh okay. 
Yeah. yeah. I didn't open it. I didn't okay. Open it. <laughs> good. Good man. So let's start with the um, let's start with the Chambier actually. Okay. 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 Yeah. You're the expert. And this is because it's for it's it's. I just want to make sure that we don't wreck your palate. <laughs> oh. Okay. 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 <laughs> yeah. So it's like anything, right? Like I mean, if you imagine like you went out for dinner and you ate a whole bag of sour skittles before dinner, like your tongue would just be ravaged and you wouldn't be able to taste anything. So yeah. 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 Okay. The okay. raspberry beer that you were going to open up that's a sour beer yeah okay so okay. if you were to open that it probably would wreck your palate but the chambier is a beautiful place to start all right let, let's get this let's get the sound nice and crisp we got a mic right above me here hold on okay okay there you go there you go oh wow anticlimactic no but i mean <laughs> but i bet the taste will be very very good all right so yeah. okay so what, what what are we looking for here in this so what tell me a little bit more about this one all right, so that is the Chambier. And um, as you can see, it, the name sort of says a lot about the beer. So essentially what it is, uh, and we actually coined this term last year, is it, you know, it's a mix between champagne and beer. So in, in reality, it's fully a beer, but the idea behind it was how can we bring those, you know, uh, the champagne vibe or feeling or flavors uh, into some beer? So uh, it's a super refreshing, very bubbly beer. Um, and we have actually bottle carved that beer. So it, when we bottle the beer, it goes in without any carbonation. And oh. the sugars that are, exactly. So the, uh, there's a bunch of sugar in the beer and the yeast in the beer eats the sugar and actually carbonates the beer naturally inside the bottle. Wow. Okay. Well, I thought yeah. science was cool, but now I think it's really cool. This is awesome. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Let's try this. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. That is very unique. Yeah. So it's like super bubbly, uh, lots of fruit flavors, fruit esters, you know, uh, it's not overly sugary because the, um, the, the, uh, the yeast in the beer actually ate the majority of the sugar. So all those floral, herbal notes are still there, but the sugars have been almost removed from the beer. That is incredible. Like this is, this is definitely, yeah, this is going on my Santa wish list right here. Like this is, okay, yeah, this is fantastic. Awesome. No, this is really nice. This is really nice. So next is the, uh, you can go for the Baltic Porter. Okay, okay, very nice. Yeah, so this beer is uh, probably one of my top two beers that we make. And I, uh, I'll let you pour it, and then I'll tell you exactly what style of beer it is. I always uh, love that sound. Satisfying. That's the sound of a Friday right there. All right. Let's yes. Pour it. <laughs> so immediately you can tell it's dark in color, right? So that beer is actually a lager. Okay. A lager, yes. but dark in color. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, the Baltic Porter is uh, it's a dark lager, you could say. So um, without going into too much detail about the brewing process, the reason this beer is that color is because we've added roasted malt to it. And the roasted malt is what's going to give a lot of this beer its flavor. So when you when you um, when you put roasted malt into a beer, you're going to get those super roasty flavors, chocolatey flavors. I always feel like I get kind of like a maybe marshmallowy flavor out of it, but maybe that's just like my mentality of like roasting around the fire. Who knows? Nice, um, nice. Okay, let's try this. But a very approachable dark beer. Oh, that is that is chocolate and marshmallows right there. Yeah. Yeah. But you know what? I'll tell you honestly, I'm not a big fan of dark beer, but this is is actually like you said, it's very approachable. It's a very good term for Yeah. Man, you said you're you're in sales for this company? For, for I'm the sales manager for Nonsuch, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, no doubt. I mean, you definitely sold me on this one. <laughs> yeah, as I said, I don't drink dark beer, but like I'm not surprised. This is so good. Yeah. So good. Fantastic. I, the beer sells itself. Um but yeah, like what I usually tell people, cause you know, more often, not, not more often than not, but there's a lot of times that somebody will say, oh, I, I don't like dark beer. So I always kind of introduce this beer. I'll say like, okay, well, do you like chocolate? Most people say yes. Do you like coffee? Most people say yes. Absolutely. And I mean, th that's what you taste in that beer really, right? So if you can, and I think that's, I think that's uh, important in all craft beer drinking, you know, it, you need to kind of set some expectations when you offer something new to somebody. Cause if you do, if you take a sip already having an idea of what it might taste like, 
you're more apt to uh, appreciate it and enjoy it, right? It's not like hitting you in the face like a ton of bricks. Absolutely, absolutely. And then if you go into it with like, because you explain it to me first, and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try this new dark beer that has different flavors than I'm used to. I was kind of more mm -hmm. obviously open to it, right? So, mm -hmm. yeah, no, this is yeah. very nice. This is very nice. All right, so let's go to the last one that we have here, raspberry. That sounds delicious. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So that is a raspberry kettle sour. Okay. So um, we basically, uh, you, we add, uh, I forget exactly what it's called. I believe it's called lactobacillus. And essentially what this does is when you add that into the beer, uh, in, in the it basically kind of ferments and creates these super tart notes. I was gonna so say, that sounds a like a superpower, but yeah, super yeah. tart, yeah, similar. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I have lactobacillus. <laughs> <laughs> nice, 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 nice. So this beer, uh, we really love sours at Nonsuch. We think they're a very fun style, um, and uh, there's there's a lot of adventuring you can do with sours. So we have an, a, almost an entire series of fruited sours. We have our raspberry kettle sour. We have a mango kettle sour. We have uh, a black currant kettle sour. So this kettle sour basically just has a massive amount of pureed raspberries added to it. So what you're going to get on the profile is you're going to get a lot of raspberry, expect it to be tart, expect it to be sweet, and then you'll see in the color it's just this like beautiful dark pink. Fantastic. Well before I actually open it, one thing we noticed that we love this little Easter egg that you guys wrote canned with love earlier when we were shooting and this is fantastic. I love this. I love little Easter eggs yeah. like that. Also, I gotta say, like we do, we do a decent amount of design and branding for companies, and I can't help but appreciate your branding on all your like all your labels. Like you go to the liquor store and you look at all the beers, and like you got it stands out. So very well done on that. I gotta I gotta give you that. Thanks as well. a lot. Yeah, that would be our uh, our brand artist Ty. He's one of the four founders, and he does. Um, most of all of our designs. So any labels you see from us, uh, the majority of our social media stuff he does. So he, we, we always feel like he does a really good job at representing the brand. Fantastic, that's uh, that's very nice. Yeah, you're, you're not kidding. It is, it is very light and like almost pinkish in color. Like these glasses are dark mm -hmm. so you can't see as much, but yeah, totally, okay. Oh wow. Yeah, that's very, it's like very strong, but like pleasantly strong. Well, you know, you yeah. welcome it. Yep. And you weren't kidding, like when you when you said to go, it's, you know, like you definitely know what you're doing, I'll tell you that much, because if <laughs> going from the first one to this last one, I totally understand, because if I think we started with this one, it would kind of like overpower the exactly. the lighter taste here, like in the other one, in the first one we tried. Yeah, wow, exactly. This is very nice, very nice. Yeah. That's why you always brush your teeth after your coffee and not before. <laughs> Fair enough. That's a good comment. <laughs> what, what, what happens with beer though? The, like, <laughs> Oh, I'm sure it's just as bad, if not worse. <laughs> Fair enough. So you guys also very generously provided us with some food. So as I understand, this is the charcuterie boards. Um, so what do we have here? Everything is labeled very nicely. So actually, much like some of the beer, I've had this. And last time I was, uh, I was there sometime in the summer. And I gotta say, like, you guys pair the, the food with the beer and the presentation and the atmosphere it, it honestly, I'm from, I'm originally from Europe and like from Ukraine okay. and it genuinely feels like you're somewhere in like a Eastern European or like even like maybe French vibes kind of deal. Like you don't feel like you're in Winnipeg. Like it's, it's very, very well done there. Well, you hit the nail on the head there, Alex. The way we brew our beer is in the traditional Belgian style. So, um, all, almost all of our influence comes from traditional European or Belgian style ales. And uh, Matthew Sabourin, our president and one of the co-founders, um, he really found the majority of his inspiration for Nonsuch when he was in Europe having those types of experiences. Yeah. Um, and I actually, I gave you the Baltic Porter and that would be one of the beers that we pair with the charcuterie board. Oh, okay. Let's bring the Baltic Porter back in the studio. Yeah, so you guys offer some food as well for curbside pickup and delivery. Um, tell me a little bit more mm -hmm. about what kind of food items you offer, so outside of the charcuterie board as well. Well, I'll give you a little bit of history on the charcuterie and then I can dip into everything else. So uh, we make all of our charcuterie meats in-house and uh, say, all I, of our meats. I, I love, I, I'm gonna quickly interrupt. I gotta say, I love the show <laughs> for talking to enthusiastic people like you, local business owners, much like myself. 
but also to experience how everybody has adjusted to the situation. Like this is fantastic. But sorry to right. interrupt, I just had to say that. <laughs> no worries, yeah, of course. Um, you know what, we, uh, we, we are, once again, being a local business, we're always trying to support local business as much as we can. So um, all of our meat is sourced locally. Uh, our pork comes from a local farm called Zin Farms. And uh, our, our head chef, Tyrone Welchinski, he cures and makes all the meats in house. So we have certain meats that will dry and cure for, uh, you know, up to 18 months. We'll have meats, yes, curing. So uh, everything you get, you know, it's made in house. He's always being creative and trying to come up with a new type of meat. Um, you know, on, on your board right there, you have the copa which is pig neck, uh, there's chorizo, diablo salami, hunter salami, and soprasada. Uh, and you know, that's just five of the sometimes 16 options we have for the charcuterie board. And fun uh, fact, we actually and then, work with Zen Farms. I actually know um, Stefan and his brother quite well. So we worked with like Red no Ember way. and like with uh, Wiener Peg, like, uh, yeah, so. Okay, of course, yeah, I love those guys. Yeah, yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, I love Wienerpeg and uh, I've had the uh, the GOB from uh, Red Ember a number of times. Same here. Uh, yeah. So yeah, on top of that, we uh, we also have uh, a burger that we offer for takeout and uh, there's been quite a bit of hype around our burger. We call it Le Burger. Okay. And it's just a super, it's a super simple burger. You know, it's a nice chuck patty on uh, a nice roll with I believe there's a dill aioli, some old cheddar, and caramelized onions. It's very straightforward, but uh, we've learned to love it, and everybody else seems to really love it too. Um, I think, and then, I think you're, uh, making, we do some you're making cheeses the team as really. well. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I've probably had one too many of those burgers, or like thirty too many. There, yeah, it's, fair, uh, <laughs> fair enough. Fair it's enough. a slippery slope. Yeah. Yeah, um, and then uh, we also we always try to bring in some uh, some fish based offerings as well, or some sea some sea offerings. And uh, Tyrone, our head chef, he actually is um, he's friends with somebody in the Atlantic Ocean, and it's a fisherman. And we get all of our uh, our fish from. Uh, well, not all of it from this one place, but Fogo Island is uh, is a place in the Atlantic that we get a lot of our fish from. We often get Fogo Island cod, um, we get halibut from there as well. Um, so once again, it's about you know kind of like that that close and personal relationship with uh, the fishermen and always doing our best to to be sustainable. Uh, and then we also, we, we do our best to to use Manitoba's local terroir. So, you know, in the summer, obviously we have a phenomenal selection of veggie options. You know, uh, obviously there's a lot of great farming and gardening that goes on in Manitoba. Um, so we always have really good salads in the summer. And then, you know, kind of when, when you transfer over to winter, uh, you know, there's less fresh vegetables. So we'll often kind of turn our turn our gaze to, um, you know, a lot of pickled vegetables. We do uh, pickled mushrooms and asparagus, pickled pickles. Um, and then uh, we'll also, uh, you know, root vegetables, we try to use our best. So we're always trying to, uh, put the smallest amount of strain on the system, right? Like if, if we don't need to bring in uh, vegetables from across the country or across, uh, you know, internationally, then we'll do our best not to do that. Yeah. All right, Logan, well, we have to wrap up here, but uh, this has been an absolute treat and I was genuinely looking forward to, to speaking with you and uh, trying everything you guys have to offer. Um, so just to wrap things up, um, what in your opinion, how can Manitobans kind of support uh, local at this time? Well, you can do your best to, uh, you know, obviously buy local. If you can buy groceries from small stores, you know, uh, at Vicks Market on Pamina Highway, New Bothwell in, in, in St. B. Uh, buy your coffee at local coffee shops, Tom Bargain, Cafe Pastel, Parlor. Um, you know, if you're having holiday celebrations just in your house, if you can buy gifts locally, uh, you know, you're, you're doing something for your local economy. Buy local beer, buy local booze. And, uh, you know, <laughs> do your best to support local. I buy one, at least one local meal a week. So um, just, yeah, you know, if you, can, if you can take a step back and go, well, if I can purchase something locally, why not, you know? Yeah. What's the best place people can support non-such? Uh, your Instagram, your website, and how can people order 
uh, curbside or delivery. So head to uh, www.nonsuch.beer and uh, you can place an order for pickup or you can place an order for home delivery and uh, we'll likely get that delivery within, uh, within 24 hours. We'll have it at your front step. Fantastic, fantastic. Well, Logan, this was an absolute treat. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for the generous uh, tray here of deliciousness. And uh, I'm just going to work away at this after the, the Zoom call is over, so don't mind me. Yeah. But uh, thank you for your time. It was great chatting with you, and uh, we'll be in touch soon. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to subscribe to Prolix Media on YouTube at Prolix Media, as well as follow us on Instagram. And if you have a local business that you think we should do something like this with to support them, to promote them, please do comment that below or send us an email at team at prolixmedia.ca. And we'll see you next time.